Welcome aboard Justin Beck, Jack, Bill and Charlie. Have a fantastic time on the water. Welcome back guys to another episode. This one's a little bit crazy. It's a lot different to what we normally do. We're swapping our home on wheels for a home that floats. Ah! Even with Sundays. <laughs> We've got five nights on a liverboard charter. It's a fair boat charter, so we're driving it ourselves. And now we get to cruise around the wind Sundays and do whatever we want. Mate. We are so excited because for us, this is bucket list stuff. We're pumped to do a fair bit of snorkeling and just cruise around on our own terms around the islands here. It's going to be good, mate. Five nights, we'll show you all about it, what's involved, what the boat looks like, and how you might be able to plan it for your own travels, eh? Catch you later. Yeah. Alrighty, so the first Arvo on the boat for us involves loading up on the dock, and we're going to spend the night in Shoot Harbour. So you're allowed to, if there's only a uh, limited number of spaces to actually berth here overnight, but we're all good because no one else is here. But, mate, what it's involved has been just unloading the ute, bringing it down the, the footpath in the wheelbarrows, and loading up on the yacht. And now, we're just enjoying a sunset with a nice welcome platter, and a glass of wine and a beer with sunset. Look at this in Shoot Harbour. Can you believe it? And... These blueberries are so <laughs> yummy! They're not blueberries, they're so Ah, anyway, I'll take you for a quick look around. We haven't had a full handover yet because this is just our first night and uh, tomorrow we'll get a full rundown on the whole boat and what's going on and we'll head out for five nights mate out around the Whit Sunday so I can't bloody wait. This is our home for the next six nights, hey? <laughs> Look at this, hey? This is amazing. It's like full luxury for us inside. So much room and the scenery on day one, well, I don't think you get pretty uh, looking at I'll tell you, fishing goes a lot too, they reckon. So I know I'm the world's most useless fisherman, but if I can't catch something here tonight, I think I should probably just give up. Oh, well, how good is this, mate? This is the first night on the yacht, and we've got a sunset like this in the harbour. Yeah. Light. Yeah. Oh. Turn that around. Oh, you can do it. Yeah. Come here, Bill. Bill. How's this? First cast for Bill off the back of the boat. We're still in the bloody harbour. Yeah. Keep winding, Bill. He's a nice little Trevally, bud. Where's what do you reckon that? High five, mate. <laughs> He's a ledge to get through. Whoa. Not He's not a bad little fish. Ooh. Yeah, but that's so give me the you're flies and we'll put him back, eh? We'll try and oh. get them on the Yeah, game. you're not allowed to eat these. Well, you can, but he's just not big enough. Yeah. <laughs> I have a big one. This is awesome. Don't mind me. Hey? Fishing with kids has never been so easy, mate. Get one, what? Get your hand on here. In the back. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh, Keep going, Ray. Oh, nice fish. Wait there. Look at this. Oh. What is that? That's a nice fish, Jack. Yeah. Turn around, show them up. Wow. Oh, you beauty, Jacko. Look at that. All right. Morning. Hey. This is our first morning on the boat. We're still in Shoot Harbour, but I've got to show you this. I'll come up the front and spin around. I'll tell you, one of the things we're most excited about on this trip is the sunsets and the sunrises. It's going to be absolutely crazy. 
I've even managed to get the wifey up. Like, can you believe that Beck mm. is actually up? Can you tell I'm <laughs> not quite awake yet? <laughs> what time is it? 5.30? Yeah. 5.30. Anyway, I'll spin this around. I hope the camera does it justice, but look at the colour of that. Seriously. Ah, amazing. it's like really probably, super orange. Yeah, well, it is it's crazy. Probably the brightest sun we've like ever seen. It's so red. And I just missed it when it was coming up from out of the clouds there. But the whole top of the clouds was bright orange as well. Hey us. bear. <laughs> hey. <laughs> there you go. Look at this. Such a good night last night. Look at all these fish down here. Can you see them as well? So many fish around us. Uh, we stayed up till about 10.30, 11. Catching fish and sharks just off the back here. And then um, we had a bloody good night. Aircon's on. Hey, fans. <laughs> I actually wish that with a hatch open and a fan on. It's so nice. It's super quiet. Okay, we've got five more nights. I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> Seriously. All right, so this so morning, uh, they're gonna, the crew will come in at about eight o'clock, show us around the boat, show us what to do for a couple of hours. And then we'll be off, mate. Swinging around here. We'll be chuffing off out through the heads, going to find our first anchorage in the Whit Sundays. <laughs> The little ones, or <laughs> mm. what do you reckon, babe? So good, hey. It's just right about it. So good. Beck <laughs> just told me, I'll tell you, oh. we've only spent one night on the boat. <laughs> you know what she just said? She said, Let's trade the caravan in for a yacht. I'm like, mate, we haven't even left the mooring yet. Like, <laughs> see how you go in a bit of rough weather. But it is, it's, it's I don't know something about it it's full relax mode mm. like it is so cool it's and the kids awesome. are frothing something new something exciting and it's very spacious it, yeah, yeah. It's, there's probably at least four or five times the amount of living room than what we used to so it's definitely luxury for us <sighs> <laughs> oh this is so good check it out can't wait to show you a sunrise and a sunset and some beaches and stuff where we pull up out here. Like some of the photos just look mental. What do you reckon? Are you gonna be okay? Yeah, totally. I've got this. Hey? We just had four hours with Mike. He's a resident expert around here on sailing and all things with Sunday rent a yacht. See you, Mike. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Alrighty. We're on our own. Oh dear, is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah, it's a great thing. It's a great thing, right? Oh. Let's turn around first stop tonight. I think we've decided that we're going to uh, try and hit a place called Sid Harbour, which is a couple of hours away. That means it'll put us there around 2 o'clock, 2.30. Uh, we can anchor up early and just kick back, have a fish, and uh, just relax for the night and plan where we're going next. The problem we got here is that we sport for choice, right? There's so many bays and islands and beaches to check out, and uh, we just don't know where to go. I know. I know. So we're going to go to Sid Harbour. It's recommended as a first night anchorage. And we'll read over the book. There's some great content to read. Hey, I'll show you this book later. It's mint. But for now, we'll get cracking and uh, we'll show you a few things on the way over to Sid Harbour. So that there we're going past. That's Daydream Island. The first one you'll hit coming out of Shoot Harbour, which is back in there. We're going to go out this way past Daydream. And then we're going through this passage here called Unsafe Passage, which Mike assures me. <laughs> is actually pretty safe so that's in between north mole and mid mole is south mole so you'll see north mole island up there mid mole and this is south mole here we're going to drive through there we're going to make our way across over to here into a place called sid harbour so anyway i'll show you that when we get there first fish of the trip we're halfway across to sid harbour in the channel we're just towing up I trust the old Halco Laser Pro. 
six metre jobby. And uh, I'm lucky I turned around and had a look because this thing was singing. I almost run out of line. So the good thing about these is it's got the autopilot on it. I can still see where we're going. But I just knocked the, the levers into neutral, into idle. And it'll hold us on its course. Well, I get this fish in and see what it is, eh? I reckon it'll be a sort of a mackie or a tuna. Mm. Oh, I'm pumped. I haven't had a good fish for a long time. I've been so useless this year. Anyway, let's get it in and give you a look, eh? Mm. <laughs> Once I had fish dad with some um, heaps of whiting, like the oh, different yes, one, whiting, just like heaps of whiting. It's my best friend Kobe, but yeah. Oh, it's a good fish. Have a look at this. What's you come up, Taco? Look oh, at that. Geez, that's huge. Oh, yeah, Spanish mackerel, baby. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, my God, I reckon that's a shark. I uh, haven't put it on there. It's a big spanner. Oh, Dad. Mom, oh, Dad, on. get it. Hold it on. Mom, it's a big spanner. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're not going to lose him. Oh, geez, I hope we don't lose this fish. Yeah. No, quick, get it. Oh, that for me. Yeah. We haven't got a gap or anything. I'm fairly well unprepared. Look out, boys. A big gap for it. Oh my god. That's... Oh, oh. Are you going? Yeah. Oh, watch your feet, watch your feet. Mom! Mom, it's huge! Mom, it's got a huge. Ha 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 yeah! Look at that! Jeez, that's Oh yeah, it's British mackerel. First good fish of the trip. What do you reckon about that, lads? Oh my god. You guys god. are right, doesn't it? Then you said it was like, <laughs> Look at those teeth. Oh yeah. Look That's at what I mean. Teeth. That's the Helco Laser Pro. They're like 16 bucks. Perfect for this sort of stuff. They're so big. Oh yeah. How good is that? So now they're going to call in um, every boat and see where they are, where they plan to stop uh, overnight, yeah. and where they're going to go the next day. Rhythm, rhythm, sun -sun, sun -sun. That way they know where you're going to be, they can keep track of you and uh, keep you safe. So I'll let you know when uh, they call us up. We are called Angelique. So when they call up Angelique, I'll say, Yeah, this is where we are, this is where we're going, and they'll be like, Sweet. I'll let you know. This is Angelique, go ahead. It is unbelievable, mate. We couldn't be happier. Yes. That's sensational. That's great. And um, I think you're headed over to Sid Harbour, right? That's correct, mate. We are there now, anchored up uh, for the night, and we'll head off in the morning towards uh, Butterfly Bay. Yeah, mate, everyone's happy. Kids are good. Got a big mackerel on the way over, so we got dinner sorted. And now we're just hiding now. It's a little bit windy over here, but we're sort of tucked in close to the mountain there, so we'll be pretty calm overnight, I think. Over. Yeah, Romeo, that's okay. Have a really pleasant time seeing you evening, Dave. And uh, we'll speak to you in the morning, over. No dramas, thank you very much. So there you go. That's how they know where everyone is. That's how they, they know how to keep everyone safe. And that's how they can update you with weather conditions and uh, give you any tips and forecast of what's happening when you come along. So I'll tell you what, this is our first stop for the night. This is called Sid Harbour. There's a place called Dugong Inlet there and another one called Sawmill Bay just there. We are anchored up in about five meters of water. And there's a bit of cloud, but hey, it is nice. There's a nice little breeze coming across. The miso's got a glass of wine out the front of you, hey? And uh, it is just fantastic, mate. So it's gonna be good. Just gonna chill out here for the night, have a few baits out, maybe catch a few fish, and uh, we'll cook up that Spaniard uh, that we got on the way over. So good times, good times. Actually, we might even take the dinghy. I've got the dinghy down. We might even shoot over and have a look at these little beaches here. Just poke around, see what we can find.
Yeah. And here we are, mate, hey? Our first beach stop in the Whitsunday Islands. And guess what? It's Whitsunday Island. This is Sawmill Beach, and it is pretty damn spectacular. There's been a fair few other boats pull up out here now. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's another one, two there. So there's eight boats all together. And why wouldn't you? We've got a bit of an easterly blowing, so it's coming straight over the top of us. Then you come over here, and there's a couple of picnic tables, a few walking tracks, some toilets. And I tell you, it is pretty bloody picturesque. Have a look at that. Ah, anyway, I'll take you up here. Ah, show you a bit of info. What do you found, Beck? Yeah, it's pretty cool, hey. Apparently, you can camp at the next beach called Dugong Beach, but you can do a one-kilometer rainforest walk here too. So it's beautiful. It looks it's like really it's all footpath and stuff as yeah. well. So apparently, it's an easy work. You go up to the peak and have a bit of a lookout. So oh yeah, here it is. Here, look. Yeah. So we're here at Sawmill, you can either walk over to Dugong where you can camp or you can go up to the lookout. There you go. It's a bit nice isn't it? Are you doing the walk or? No, I'm going no. back to have one. Not either. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might skip exercise for five nights I reckon. Hey, just the exploring these beaches and fishing will be enough exercise for us. Let's go. Speaking of fishing, we are going to fillet this and we're going to do my world famous beer batter tonight. And we are going to hook in and the rest of it can go in the fridge. This will feed us oh, for the whole trip. Well, hey, not bad for me first go and I reckon. Look at that boat. Well done. There is so much meat there. Nice. Oh, that is delicious. All right. Other side. Okay, so here's what it looks like, hey? All filled it up, a couple of pieces for the barbie tomorrow, a couple of little fish fingers for batter, and then look what it looks like, hey? Fresh wit Sunday Spanish mackerel, beer battered, in a fish wrap for the kids. Eat it up. What do you reckon? What's your secret recipe to making a good wrap? My husband. <laughs> Thank you, yes, finally some you credit. Can't go back there, can't go back there. Look at that. Oh. Oh, there's a little one. What do you think of this, mate? So good. Like, this fresh fish. Fresh lit Sunday and Mackie. That. Oh my God. And look at this. What a view. The best. Talk about million dollar views. Mm. And million dollar dinners. Mm. Cheers to that. Mm. Oh, I better get a beer. Wowee. What a bloody good first day, I tell you. <laughs> Don't get much better, eh? Good morning from Sid Harbour, hey? This is our first anchorage. I'll take you out here and show you the sunrise. Just fired up the barbecue because I'm gonna cook bacon and eggs out the back here. And then up we go as we walk along. Check it out, coming up over the mountain there. Oh, how good is this? It was such a flat night. Let's say like, we didn't budge one inch. It's just like smooth. Everyone slept from 7.30 last night through till 6 this morning. The kids did anyway. Um, and guess what, wifey, I won't show you, but I can see she's still in bed through the hatch down there. So if she can sleep, then that means this boat ain't moving an inch because she is useless. Anyway, this is us. <laughs> yes, a bit of bacon. What do you reckon, Bill? Bacon and eggs for brekkie? And we caught a big... What's it called? Yesterday we caught a big mackerel, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Ah, like, yeah. oh, anyway, I might just go and make another coffee and come and sit here and watch this thing. Eh? And thumbs up. <laughs>
Alrighty, so before we head off this morning, we've still got to do school work with our kids. And I tell you, it works pretty well in the boat because we've got this table and we've got another big table outside. So, living so <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. You can split the kids. That's great. <laughs> so, what are you doing, Bill? Bill's Ooh, doing, he's doing patterns some patterns today. and stuff. Oh, there you go. Kill he looks it. pretty excited about it too, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jack goes outside, and this is pretty good for him, considering we're on the water. We're learning about different sorts of sharks and all that sort of stuff. What a great book. Hey? What else you got in there? Which one did we see yesterday? We seen a tiger shark, didn't we? Yeah, tiger shark. Ooh, we'll have to try and find that one. Check this out. No, look at this. Oh my god. Here's a big tiger shark. Look at him. Oh. Wow. That is cool. Yeah, that's not a tiger shark. It is a tiger shark, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. There you go, hey? There you go. Okay, um, anyway, I'll get back to grab this. I'll show you where we're going to go today and a bit of info that we've learned um, along the way about how to bloody get there. So, All right, so this is the map that you get supplied in the boat. This is of the Whit Sundays in the area that you're allowed to actually go. So it's pretty easy to see your boundaries and to see where to go. And all this same mapping is on like our GPS screen up the top there as well, which makes it super easy. So to show you where we are, we are in here. So Sid Harbour. Yesterday we left from over here in Shoot Harbour. We came across here and straight across into here. And we're sort of anchored in a little place called Sawmill Bay. And then today we're going to go up the inside, all the way up here, past Hook Island, hang out in here for a bit and find a good anchorage depending on the wind around Butterfly Bay or Blue Pearl Bay or Stonehaven. Somewhere there that's going to be super nice and flat for us. But I'll give you another hot tip. They give you this book. Apparently this is like the Bible for the Whit Sundays. And every anchorage on that map is in here and it gives you all the info you need to know. So you can look it up and go, oh yeah, it's going to be good, it's going to be bad. But the best thing is, so say we're going to look at going up around here somewhere or maybe in um, one of these spots, you can look it up and it tells you where it's safe. All those blue arrows, like you can look at your wind direction and go, oh yeah, we're getting an easterly or a southeasterly. So it means the blue arrow means it's nice and protected. So how good's that? So we're going to go and find a spot. We'll look at the wind. It's blowing east, southeast. And then we can find a super protected spot to pull up for the night. So then you don't drive six hours somewhere and get there and you're actually like getting blown to bits, you know? So there you go. Two easy bits of info uh, that'll help you plan your trip around the, the island. Up, babe, anchors up. Righto, we're on the move again. This is day two. So we're leaving uh, Sid Harbour today and basically heading over to like the north side of the islands towards Hook Island. The aim today is to get to some epic snorkeling spots. We're trying to avoid the wind. We've got, what have we got? East? East, South, East, East. Yeah, so we're just trying to keep out of the wind. They're not like really bad though at all. So anyway, heading up uh, to... Butterfly Bay. And what was the other one? Oh, there's like a place Blue. called Stonehaven and Blue Pearl Bay. Yes, we're yeah. heading up to all these little places, do a bit of snorkeling and we'll just try and find a little cove to basically anchor up in or more for the night. And uh, yeah, it's about it for day two, isn't it? It's gonna be good, mate. Nice and relaxing. Wait. Just chill out and enjoy this. It's it is such stunning. It's so bloody nice. We couldn't have picked a better week, I don't reckon. No. It's just beautiful. Anyway, we are headed that way. Ooh. We are just pulling into a place called Stonehaven Bay and have a look at the colours, would ya? There's a heap of public moorings along in here so you can pick up one of them and stay the night. Apparently it's awesome for snorkeling and turtles. We're gonna go and find one in this bay here, Stonehaven Bay. <laughs> we nearly had a divorce trying to pick up a mooring, but anyway, we won't show you that. We got it in the end, you just gotta pick it up. And uh, the hard part is it's quite heavy and you gotta use the pole over here, I'll show ya. So you use this one and you reach over the edge and pick up the rope and then you're going to drag it through the front. There's a spare spit at the front on your anchor spit there and you're hanging over this cleat. But um, I can tell you because she's not here, but Beck isn't the best on the throttles and 
<laughs> my right was her left and this mooring boy just kept going everywhere and I couldn't grab the thing so anyway I'm glad there's it's not too busy around here and there's not too many people watching us ah because that would have been quite hilarious for him and pretty embarrassing for us but we're gonna drop the dinghy off and we're gonna go snorkeling in around these rocks here so should be good apparently there's a heap of turtles here and they're really sort of chilled out and you can swim around with them so this is us Stonehaven if you have a look over there that is Hayman Island you can see out there look at that it's only us here and one other boat pretty nice eh? you can stay here overnight as well so wow <laughs> that's all you can say is wow what's going on here bear what's going on here what do you got on Sing suits, sing, sing. Singer suits. How's yours go, Bill? Mm -hmm. Full mask. Oh yes, Jack, you look like a scuba diver. That's epic. So we've just come into stinger season up here. It runs from November through to early in the year or maybe May, but I'll put the full info in down here. It's worth wearing a stinger suit. Like it is at your own risk, but there's some nasty things up here with irukandji and box jellyfish and even blue bottles. So that can really ruin your holiday. You can get these stinger suits from the guys at uh, with Sunday Rennie Yacht, so it's worth grabbing one each. And uh, we're going to chuck them on, take the dinghy over now into these awesome looking bays, and we'll go for a snorkel and we'll show you what we can find. Trace it on you or the boat? Just on the boat. In the drink, boys. Hey? Mm -hmm. Unhook it, let's get rolling. <laughs> And these skin suits are awesome. Wow. Look down there, look at the size of that. Look at the bombies. Look at the colour of it. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that is so nice. Alright, everyone follow me. Look out, she's the instructor. show you what I used for fishing and how we caught that Mackie yesterday. Um, I am pretty useless at fishing. I used to be alright, well I thought I did, but I haven't caught anything for a while and um, I've never done much offshore stuff either. But what I have done is a bit of trolling here and there and I'll show you what I do, how I tie it on and uh, it might not be the best way to do it, but at least it works for us. So I'll cut that one off. I was trolling around with that yesterday in the dinghy. Didn't do any good. Um, so. Let's start with these. These are like the cheapest option I can get and what I got recommended by heaps of people too. Helco Laser Pros, they're 16 bucks. You can get them in different sizes and different depths. So I've got a six meter one that got smashed yesterday and then I'm just gonna put on the two meter one today because we're going up the inside and it's a little bit shallower. So I'll run that one today. And then I just buy their 150 pound um, steel trace because most things like especially those Spanish Max and that um, get really sharp teeth and they can chomp straight through a leader so a bit of wire like that and then also you need some leader so I've got 80 pound leader on my rod and put enough of it on there so you can actually wind it onto your reel and then grab the leader and pull the fish in if you had a glove it would be handy but I don't so I cut my finger up yesterday and then coming in close Jack we'll show you this knot that I use just here so you can use it. It's the simplest knot and I've always used it. It's called a uni knot. So for those of you out there that haven't done much fishing, this might be easy. Just feed it through, give yourself a bit of a loop. This bit's a tag, I call it a tag end. Grab the tag end, twist it like that to create a little loop and then pinch the two together. And then all you do is grab your tag and go around your main leader, back through the loop four times. One, two, it's a little bit tricky but not too bad. Three, you can use your uh, use your teeth if you have to, but and four, last one, and grab it, slide it together like that, 
bit of spit on it to lube it and then you just pull that down like this. There you go, that pulls tight. It's like the simplest knot, it's all I use for anything. Cut it off nice and short. There we go. That's our rig for trolling for Mackies and whatever else is out here. Wow. So we're going to troll again on our way up to uh, Butterfly Bay or Blue Pearl, wherever we end up. So here's hoping we get another one, eh? I'll be on the troll for about two minutes. Oh my God. Oh, I reckon it's you. Pop it in the back. Will we have a glove? Oh, oh, look at that. Wow, that's massive. <laughs> really? Wicked. Hey, we can eat him up. Yep. All right, here's our tuna. I've just skinned it and just cut it into a couple of little steaks. Bit of oil, salt and pepper. I'm gonna sear it straight on the barbie, yeah. okay? I've never done it before, but I reckon it sounds like a good thing to do. Here we go. We're just gonna slap it on. Ooh. Look at that. Won't take too long. This barbie, I'm in love, mate. It heats up so damn fast. Anyway, have that. A bit of salad. Hold on. Hey, did you know they call tuna chicken in the sea? Did you know that? I did know that because you told me. <laughs> I just worded her up. But this is why. Check it out. It's oh, actually like it once you cook it up, it's kind of like chicken, and we're just gonna have a little bit of aioli. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's hot. It's bloody nice. But it's good. But even if you don't like eating fish, like fishy fish. Yeah. That. He's not, and look at it, it just flakes apart like that. It's bloody nice, so, isn't it? We've got tons of this, don't we? We've got two big slabs of tuna. Kids would love it too. They would, yeah. But that is so nice. Mm. Nice and healthy too, nothing but a bit of salt and pepper. Oh. Straight on the barbecue. How good is this for lunch? Mmm. Mmm. Giddy up. So I'm just here um, making lunch for the kids. Which you want, cheese singers. And I look out and I think, you know what, that's a bloody good photo and a nice spot to make lunch for the kids. Check it out. Look at that, seriously. Oh, just cute. You're standing here and you just kind of look around. It's just all blue ocean. It's so beautiful. But anyway, amazingly enough, um, we actually bring enough food this trip. I always don't pack it up. I don't know why. But um, we seem to have heaps of food, heaps of meat. But uh, you know, just the standard cheese and veggie might say it's for the kids for lunch. Like I said, we've got loads of meat, so I think we're gonna use that Barbie there and pop on a chook. We've got leftover salad from last night. So that's dinner for us, but um, I better get to actually making these lunches because this view is incredible. Look at it. Just need some more fish. All right, we are gonna try and grab a mooring again. We didn't film it last time because we didn't think it would be that hard, but it, was very it made funny. it look very difficult. So I'm going to leave this on. Hopefully there's a lot of other boats around. So hopefully we can just snag up first go and not yep. actually get embarrassed. Yeah, we hope no one's <laughs> watching us. Anyway, I'll take us up as far as I can and then I'll just try and get back to ease up on it. Mm. And not, uh, not throw me over the front of the boat. Thank you. Sorry if we start yelling and screaming at <laughs> each other. Check this out. This is the beach at Blue Pearl Bay. It's like made up of all this busted coral and shells. Put the dinghy over. Beck and the boys are out here. Charlie and me have just come back in. And you can see our cat way up the back there. And these are all these moorings. I reckon it'll come four o'clock. A lot of these big boats will leave. They're all day trippers. They'll head off. We might be able to sneak over here into the into the bay. But 
Wow, man. <laughs> Just keeps getting better and better. Hey, day two, babe. Day two it is, mate. Woohoo! Hey, right, couple wing dings on the barbie for the kids. This is my new favourite love. This barbecue on the back of this boat cranks, mate. It's, it's wicked. It's a good so one. Check this out. This is called Blue Pearl Bay. And we're sharing it with what I think is some movie stars <laughs> on a super yacht. And uh, they've even got their own chef because we've seen them inside preparing, so they must be loaded. But check out this the colours, mate. The cliffs, the trees, the water. Oh, we went for a snorkel it's today. Magic. We grabbed the dinghy down here and we shot up to the beach up here. And the kids just, just swam around yeah. for about an hour. We found a cool little spot around the corner and then we picked up a mooring here and we're just going to spend the night. Hey, it's the kids are going to have um, chicken wings for dinner. Me and Beck are going to have, I don't know, maybe some Spanish mackerel or we might have a, a break from fish and have a bit of steak and salad <laughs> uh, or something. But we'll figure it out. If that's the hardest decision we have to make for this year, mm. we're doing all right. So, Happy. mate, Blue Pearl Bay, we got recommended to come here and I can see why because it is dead set yeah absolute specialty material. and the <laughs> snorkeling today was really good oh. snorkeling the Ningaloo reef we haven't done too much of the great barrier reef and i was actually really surprised out here it's um, good yeah the coral and the fish there so yeah. i was yeah good. surprisingly impressed and the water temp bang on mate so this oh. is us for the night mate we're just gonna chill here nice flat water protected from the easterly we've got a southeast wind blowing about 15 knots and tomorrow, babe, we're going to scoot back around the inside of Hayman and we're going to end up at a place called Butterfly Bay and we'll show you that one. Oof, they say it's mint. So anyway, we'll leave you with a beautiful sunset. I'm going to get the drone up and get some footage and uh, maybe even a few starry nights tonight. And uh, yeah. you can watch that, mate. And I'll see you in the morning with me morning coffee, eh? <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Nighty night. Good morning from Blue Pearl Bay. What a place to wake up, honestly. The sun rose here about 6.30 in the morning over the back of the hills. It's pretty crazy, you can see here, see all the trees, they're like fully stripped of all their leaves. Some of them are just starting to come back. But that would have been for when that cyclone come through here a year or so ago and absolutely pumped everything. Um, I think it was Cyclone Debbie, but I'll put the details in here. It would have, uh, absolutely smashed this place Whew. but not like that today bloody delicious here this morning and we are getting ready we're going to head off to a place called butterfly bay we're going to go back down the inside through the passage between hayman and with sunday and we'll duck around into butterfly bay and show you that one so a little bit of sad news for you it's like one of my worst ever nightmares ah our poor old droney decided to uh, take a full throttle dive into the water yesterday. Anyway, no control, you know, no fault of my own. It just went bananas. I don't know, they're electronics. They have gremlins now and then. I don't know what happens, but anyway, it decided to take off at a million miles an hour and go up. And then it turned around and went straight back down while I, I couldn't do anything about it. So anyway, the drone's gone. We've got it, I got it out of the water. But she's no good. Hopefully I'll be able to send it away and I should be able to get it replaced under the, the care refresh program that we've got through DJI. Hopefully. Hopefully. I don't know what went wrong with it, but anyway, pretty sad for me. Let's go. Butterfly bay today. Oh yeah, hey. How good's this mate? We love our coffee. <laughs> we oh bought our coffee God. machine and thank God we did and our neutral bullet. Yep. We have a smoothie and a coffee every day and um anyway you can run it on the boat because in behind there there's a little generator you can crank it up while you're stationary and all your 240 volt appliances will run i've got to have my Cheers morning coffee. coffee or else i'm a mess and then your lunchtime coffee and... yeah no i try not to have one up <laughs> two o'clock's my cut off anyway if you do have 240 volt appliances fear not you can crank them up while you're on board
<laughs> Seriously, this is the epitome of paradise. We've just uh, rolled in, just parked the catamaran up. The dinghy is right here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There's our cat out there. Literally takes us 30 seconds to get in here. And the snorkeling out here is epic. The water is so clear. It's all these cliffs and that that drop into the water. The beach is made up of all this coral. Oh my God, it is so beautiful here. And there's no one here. It's quite early in the morning, but it is absolutely pristine. And What's the, the water like? Just in there snorkeling. What's the water like, Jacko? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. What has Dad knocked up this morning? Um, pancake burgers. Yum, Jack's making his fruit faces. No, 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 pancake faces. Pancake faces. Dig in, boys. Mm. How did you make them, Dad? Uh, just self-raising flour, an egg and milk, mate. One, one and one. So one cup of flour, one cup of milk and one egg. Easy peasy. Mix her up and, um, them on. Look at this view too that you get to. Those are right, I know. It's, <laughs> it's better every day. Alrighty, what's the plan today, man? Um, this is butterfly by here. This year, yeah. We're gonna go down to here. Oh, keep coming. We're gonna come all the way down to Tongue Bay for lunch, oh, yeah. and then around the corner, this is Whitehaven Beach. So we're gonna have a look at that and Hill Inlet, and then over here, there's a little place called Chalky's Beach which is supposed to be amazing and it's protected from the easterlies. So we're gonna go down there, probably about a three hour or four hour trip, I'd reckon. And we'll just come around the corner and duck in here and scoot down and have a look at these little bays along here. But because we do have an easterly swell coming in, a lot of this stuff on this side of the island will be a bit rolly in the bays and that. So we'll just come down and uh, make it into the more protected ones so we're a bit more comfortable. What do you reckon about that, mate? Whitehaven Beach? Hey! Old Love's doing the dishes. Old Love. You keen for Whitehaven? Yes, I am actually. It's gonna be good. Hopefully the yeah. sun comes out. It's a bit dreary today. A little bit of cloud cover, um, but it's sort of on and off. And the wind's not, well, hasn't picked up yet. So hopefully it stays like this for the rest of the day. I tell you, it was a brilliant night last night. It was calm, it was quiet. Had a good sunrise this morning. Ah, Butterfly Bay. Oh, put that one on your list. So it's a little bit lumpy today. We're just coming out around the point here and then into Mackerel Bay. But it's pretty lumpy. And uh, oh Becky, not feeling too great, are you, mate? You need to sit up here and get the breeze. Hopefully once we turn this corner and start coming down the other way, this lump should be behind us. And it might not be so uncomfortable. But anyway, it shouldn't be too long. Another half an hour or so, we'll be around the corner. Getting down to Tongue Bay. A couple of hours, yeah. All right, babe, where are we off to? We're going to hit Hill Inlet. So I'm pretty excited because it's literally the most iconic thing in the Whit Sundays. So we're just going to take the dinghy in and do the little walk from memory. It's about 10 or 15 minutes and it's absolutely beautiful. So that's where we're headed. Don't know how far it is in the dinghy, but we'll let you know. It's right there. Oh, where? It's looks, here. Yeah. Oh. Looks like the place to be, doesn't it? Look how many boats are parked in here. <laughs> this is where we pulled up the boat, the tinny. This is where we're anchored, somewhere out here. And it's only 700 meters. You walk up here and you can look out at Hill and Land on that side.
you go, this is Chalky's Beach. That's our cat out there. Put the dinghy in. Look at the colour of this sand and this water. And we've all just been snorkeling out here along the edge of this fringing reef. Like you just paddle out and kick along. It's so clear, so many fish, and home's just there. <laughs> this is awesome, mate. Eh? Two, three, go! Yeah! Ah! <laughs> oh, Bill! <laughs> oh, you bit of dust, buddy. <laughs> How'd you go? <laughs> oh, that was epic. <laughs> you got melted. Go, on, let's go for another swim. <laughs> yep. Go. I want to do it. <laughs> Sunset, mate, on our second last night. And I'll turn this around and give you a look. We're on Chalky's Beach. Oh, I am. Beck and the kids are having dinner over here. This is us just here floating just beside the sun on the water. Hey, there's a heap of moorings here. So there's all these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight other boats. All enjoying this. And that's Whitehaven Beach. You can see way over there in front of that hill. Ah, oh, mate, what a <laughs> what an amazing day. It has been sensational, apart from a lumpy morning uh, where we got a little bit wet and everyone felt a bit queasy coming around the front there. The rest of the day has just been on point, mate. Snorkeling around here is just, oh, mind blowing. Hey? The water is that clear. Really colourful co coral in close as well. And heaps of big fish for the kids to see, so. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner too. And I might um, show you a few pics. What it looks like from the boat, mate. Enjoying a cold beer and a bit of steak for dinner. <laughs> This is Turtle Bay. We're just dropping the anchor. Just got here. And there's a bloody turtle straight out the front. Oh, probably can't see it on there, but. But, Oi, can you seriously see the colour of that water in next to the beach? And it's not even a sunny day yet. I think this cloud will blow away. It's all good over that side. But look at it, mate. Hey, there he is. <laughs> so we'll take the tinny in, go for a swim around the beach, and there's even a couple of little palm trees in there. It'll feel like we're in the Bahamas, I reckon. Oh, you already are. <laughs> in the Whitsundays, Bahamas. So good. Anyway, we'll let this anchor take up, and then we've got to hook the bridle on, give it a bit of extra chain, make sure we're not going to drift anywhere, and then we'll pull the dinghy off, and we'll be in on the beach, eh? Oi! <laughs> <laughs> so we've just made the call. We're going to spend the day here, and then there's lots of moorings in at yeah. Hamilton Island tonight, babe. Oh, we're pretty excited. I think we're going to get a berth, actually. So we'll pull up there for the night and uh, we'll, yeah, stay the night there and go and explore Hamilton Island. We will. Yeah, it should be good, actually. It'll be nice. Um, it costs you $125 to pick up, uh, not a mooring, a, a, a berth, berth, which is on the hard dock or the floating yeah. pontoon there. So we'll do that and it'll give us a chance to have a look around Hamilton Island. Yeah. And it'll be a short trip home in the morning. So That's cool. I think that it'll definitely be worth it because it's so beautiful that island. Yeah, it is yeah. nice. And it's just another aspect of what you can do when you yeah. come on one of these bare boat charters. You yeah. can just pick and choose what you want to do. It's good. We and weren't we'll going to go there here. actually, were we? No, we hadn't planned yeah. on it. But we're so close now and the It's literally just around the corner around that tent. It is, yeah. yeah. And the winds are a bit little bit yucky. So um we might have our last night go, oh, go and have dinner on Hamilton Island, but that's our plan for now, but they always change. They so, do. sun's Terrible. coming out, oh. so we might be here. Look at it. Wow. All right, so I'm going to show you something that we've been using on this trip. We've only just got them a few weeks ago because, well, the last few times we've been snorkeling with the kids on big day trips out to the reef and that, 
we've really struggled because uh, we've been fixing their masks and they've been choking on water and all that sort of stuff. So we thought we'd give these things a try, uh, the old ninja masks. And I'll tell you, it's made our trip a whole lot easier and the kids are frothing on them. So I'll pass you to Beck and I'll show you through these masks. We've got three for the kids. You can get a couple of different kids sorts ones. There's this little one and then there's one with a bit bigger snorkel on the end of it as they grow up. But good thing is for the kids is that they're full face. So your whole face is covered in. You're not gonna get water in your mouth, up your nose. And they seal really well through these straps. There's one strap that goes over the top of your head and then there's two tightening straps on the back. So you just get the kids to slip them on and then you just give them a yank at the back and it's nice and tight. And they can just breathe in there as normal. They don't need to bite down on the snorkel. They don't need to learn how to clear the mask or any of that. This stuff's got a little one-way valve in the top so they can't get water down while they're swimming along. And since the first time we've put them on, they've just gone. They just strap them on and they're gone and we've got to try and keep up with them. Normally it's like, ah, I'm choking and I'm, <laughs> we had to stop and everyone's crying because they've got salt water up their nose. But these ones, even the three-year-old or four-year-old, Charlie Bear, has slams that on and she just disappears, mate, like a boss. We don't so see her, we do don't we? See her. We're like, shivers, where's Charlie? We've got to go and catch her and all we can see is this little pink snorkel scooting around. Um, there's a couple of different adults ones. So like I said, you need to check sizing on the website and make sure it's going to fit either your small head or your big head and make sure it seals properly and one other thing i found is that when i had more beard um, i had to give it a bit of a trim to get it to seal properly around the side but same for the adults it's the same strapping system over the top pull two to tighten and away you go this one i've got is like a bit of a pro dive one and it's even got little uh earplugs slammed in on the side as well so for those who don't like getting water in their ears. It's been game changer, hasn't it's it? It's been wicked. It's it just makes yeah. our snorkeling stuff with the kids so easy. And it's not such a massive, stressful effort. Mm. And everyone has fun. Instead of going, ah, it's all too hard, you yeah. know. So I'll the, grab Jack. Hey, Jack, come and show. The best bit is mate. that they can duck dive with it and just come straight back up. They don't have to spurt their yeah. water out. So that's probably my it. my favourite function anyway. We're just going to show them how you put this on, Jacko. Pop on your knees, love. Pop on your knees. So I'm just going to loosen it. I've got all sand right now, the poor bugger. You'll be right. And then we found you just um, throw your chin in it. You can nearly oh, pop it on yourself, you Jack. Hang on a second, ready? Throw your chin in it. Yep, strap over the top. And that's it. His face is already all covered in. And then slip around. All we do is grab these straps and give one a tighten there. And then two a tighten there. Up Hang on a second. Top. And then you can pull them. And done. Keep that one down the middle in the back. And it's all even, and away you go. It's got these little valves in there so that he can breathe. Any water that gets normally, in, yeah. you can blow it out the bottom, and then any air, other air that comes in, is you breathe in through the snorkel around your nose. So you can't get choked on water. Hey? Scream! No, just a <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear him. You How can't hear that? him. <laughs> yeah, take it off, and then all you, hear enough, is... you just take it off like that. All you hear is a muffled fish. Little excited scream. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there you go. That is the ninja shark snorkels that we've got and um i'll tell you if you're going to do a lot of it on your travels or you're going to do a trip like this on a cat mate it's made wow. life easy for us come with me i'll show you a quick tour of the boat we've got we'll start here because this is where we've been spending most of our time this is the outside dining and lounge area great chill out space for the whole family Swing around here, you've got the dinghy at the back, so for exploring all the beaches and shooting around or doing a bit of fishing here and there, it's just on a couple of pulleys, easy enough to winch up and down, and it's just a little six horsepower yummy, and you can scoot into the beaches and explore and that. It's magic. Come around here, or can we take you for a walk around the boat? Oh, for the barbecue. Got to have a barbecue. Been using this breakfast, lunch, and tea pretty much. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, keep coming. Round here. You can walk all the way around, so it's brilliant. The roof space up here, we've got heaps of solar power, so we never run out of battery. There's all the sail bag and the sails and all the gear that gets you moving under wind. And then keep coming around here, up to the party deck or the sun deck. Hey, we've been doing lots of lounging around up here. Beck's been sunbaking, kids have been playing. It's just brilliant, eh? You can sit up here and just chill out while you cruise along. Pretty good aspect up here. A couple of big windows at the front, let heaps of nice air through while you're driving. And uh, your anchor, of course. So when we're anchored, anchored like we are now, you drop it out here. When you pick up a mooring, you just pick it up, pull it through that second bow spit there and hook him on. So here we go, we got a kayak up the front. You can get a kayak or a paddle board or whatever you want. Then shoot down this way, I'll show you the driver's station or the helm, I reckon they call it in ship speak, eh? 
And here we go, here's the helm. This is my workstation for the last five days. Uh, one good thing is you don't need any experience and you don't need a boat license. The training they give you back at Shoot Harbour is enough to be able to control this bad boy out here safely and drive yourself around. So swing around here back, you can see it's got all these big navigation aids. So yes, we've got maps inside and they taught us how to use them, but this here is just like having a GPS in your car and you can just follow the chart plotter, zoom in, zoom out, see where we are and then that is easy enough to track yourself around the with Sundays and know how deep it is and how safe it is, all that sort of stuff. So that's us. Swing around here. Hang on, let me pass back. Down here. This is what's been catching us dinner the whole time. Got the fishing rod in the holder. Anytime we're under power and we're not in a green zone, I've got that thing hanging out the back and hopefully we'll get a few more fish on the way home. Anyway, that's the outside. I'll let Beck give you an inside tour tonight and uh, see you later. So what you can see here, that's the Hamilton Island Resort. So that's on one side of the island. The marina is on the other side. So we have to go around this passage and on the other side of the island. You can see it here. We've got to go around and then back in here to the marina. Won't take long, maybe about an hour. And then you just catch a bus from the other side, brings you over the island and you can check out the marina, check out the resort, go for a swim, do all that sort of stuff. So that's our plan, we'll go and moor up or berth up in the marina and then we'll catch the bus over and let the kids have a swim we'll grab a coffee at the resort and have a look at that how nice is that mate hamilton island resort oh, pretty specky Well, Justin managed to park this beast inside the Hamilton Marina yeah. and he did a stellar job. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so fast, Good job, we're that here. Was, Good we're go straight up to the bakery now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, high five. Yes. Well done. <laughs> So Beck is going to take you through and show you the inside of this boat. I am. Alrighty. What I'm going to start with is the kitchen area in our living space. So I'm going to do a loop around here and then I'm going to take you downstairs and show you where we've been sleeping. So this here is our kitchen galley. Um, we've got oven, grill and things here. Everything is completely supplied. So we've got pots and pans, chopping boards, all our cutlery utensils which live down here. Cooktop here. Um, we've been Bring our coffee machine and Nutribullet. We haven't used, well, we've been, we're in shore power now, but we've just been chucking on the Jenny every morning to make our coffee, which has been really handy. So we need that every morning. Um, fridges. Fridges. We have three fridges on this boat, which is, again, is awesome because you have to bring your five, seven, 10 days worth of food and drinks and that sort of thing. So we just open these up. There's your fridges, another one there, and you one out here. Now here is our, not that we've really been eating here because we've been typically eating out on the deck area, but here you can see it's like another like lounge area. We've been storing our food underneath the um, cushions here, which is really handy. This here's our switchboard. I don't really know how that works. So that just runs everything on the boat. So your lights, your nav, your toilets, your battery chargers, your deck washers, your fridges. It's all circuit breakers for all that sort of gear. And then in here is our Jenny startup and shore power gen set changeover switch but don't take too much notice it's going to be different on every boat mm. but uh, at least you've got everything there and it's easily labeled and for the amateur on a yacht like you and like me it's super easy yeah I'm sitting on the aircon at the moment we are plugged into shore power which we haven't really needed because when you're out on the ocean you get those beautiful coastal breezes or ocean breezes so but we do have aircon which is pretty cool and there's a TV DVD player oh, yeah, which we haven't DVD used player. but it's there if your kids like watching a movie Use or something all our cutlery yeah, yeah, like Beck said, it's everything supplied. You know, all you have to do, all you have to bring is food, food and drinks. So good. That's clothes. it. Yeah. yeah. All right, come on down. I'll show you the kids' area or kids' rooms. 
Well, these are all the same. So before we go down, there's four berths in this boat and they're all sort of mirror imaged. Yeah. So you've so got one front and one back on both sides and they're identical. Yeah. So Jack, because there's four berths, Just and I being in one, Charlie's got her own, Billy's got his own, Jack's got his own, which they have absolutely <laughs> loved having their own bedrooms. First time in their lives they've, Ever. they've had so their own bedrooms. It's been yeah. an absolute highlight. Anyway, come on in. So this is Jack's space. You can see they've got the little nooks there. Aircon in here, which is awesome. You can pop these hatches open as well. You can see right out to the ocean and then we'll just get Justin a twist around there. Spin around, so same again, every bedroom has its own ensuite. How so good's that, that? So there's four toilets and four showers. And they're a combo. So there's your toilet and there's your shower floor and that's your shower up there. Oh, hang on, down there. You grab that puppy and you stick him up there for a shower and everybody's got their own. So if you've got four couples or a couple of different families, you all get your own spaces. So good. And just to see where he stores his clothes, he's just been popping them, excuse the mess in there. But they've just got these little drawers here and there's another big cupboard here as well. Look at that. Which probably doesn't ooh, have anything in. No. Oh! Heaps of room. So and they're I'm, mirror imaged. Yeah, just swing around and show you Bill's room. So this is our fifth night tonight, so they're not like super tiny, but Anyway, so that's Bill's spot. Again, toilet and shower just here. And then I'm just gonna that's show you this little nook here that the kids <laughs> have been loving. How good's that? Look at that? So sometimes they just sit here and watch little fish in there, which is really cool. When we've been moored fish. up in these beautiful bays and that, yeah. there is always fish and stuff so just cruising cool. around in there. Like, where are the kids? They're just like and sitting they'll be down, down here. <laughs> looking out, which is really nice. It is. Anyway, we'll come back up. So that's the boat. That's the boat, hey? Catamaran. 101 but we have loved it it's actually really spacious compared to a caravan for obvious reasons but i think it's 40 foot i think it's 40 foot how big is that i'll put the specs in anyway yeah. it's that's double the size of our caravan yeah so we've got the boys over this side justin and i and charlie being down this side everything's in here it's literally like a house a floating house it is so, so did for everyone that's like us and who lives in their caravan to put it in perspective it took us about an hour and a half to pack to come on this trip yeah so all we did was throw a few duffel bags and a few shopping bags full of food and clothes together and um a couple of cartons of water and beer and a few bottles of wine yeah and we're on the boat mate we're done so easy peasy all righty so this is our last night on the boat mate <laughs> hey and look where we're spending it the beautiful hamilton island in the marina here it's just so it's just Popping off an absolutely wicked Amazing trip. five nights. I know, yeah. right? Here's the normal ferry. There's the Cruise with Sunday ferry that'll take you day tripping. from Early Beach across here to day trip. But for us, nah. this is it. Our last night uh, moored up. We've just had a great few hours over at the hotel and the resort, swimming around and that. So cheers to that, babe. Let's cheers crack some gonna, champagne. This came on the boat, so we're going to crack open the Chandon on our last night. And, and celebrate uh, an awesome trip. Yeah, pretty much. We're going to have a chance together and uh, watch the sunset go down. The sun is going to drop just over here. And enjoy this gorgeous arena. I only have to duck up there. We're just going to grab some chips and Justin's going to cook up some fresh fish for dinner. The rest of our Spanish mackerel, mate. We'll yeah. knock it up. So here we go. How good are you? And a salad, of course. Ready? Hey! Whoa. Well done. Hey. Or one of these and we'll cheers to that. You know what? The kids have absolutely Oh mate, they will talk about this yeah. for so long. Absolutely loved it. Anyway, cheers yeah. mate. Cheers, thanks love. Here's to an awesome five nights. Stay tuned. Um we're gonna go through a heap of questions that we've been asked along the way to give you a bit more info about our um, five nights on the Whit Sundays. So cheers to that. Oh sorry. Ooh, that's good bubbles. Ooh.
so we are just getting on. <laughs> yeah, look at this. This is beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, um, this is this to be mum's a Cobra. Um, these were my girlfriend's mum's sunnies. <laughs> yeah, and um, she gave them all to me. So now this is um a little mix up. So yeah, it's mine. Oh, you can see the flash, but yeah. So, just stand up to the car to see what they're doing. And we are done, 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 and out of here. So we are heading off in the um, dinghy. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, and we got and we got these, um, what are they called again? Stinger suits, yeah. Yeah, yeah this one, um, it's so stupid. True. Yeah, because mine, they gave me like a, weird thing and it's size 6 and I'm size 8 like guys I'm serious like, look um yeah yeah you could read that um so we're in the dinghy it's pretty cool yeah what are you I'm just kidding. there's the boat hey dad yeah hey bud what's going on nothing where are we going um, we're going to the Great Barrier Reef because I'm just calling it great because I love reefs and I reckon they're always great. Hey! Get up! Hey! Bring us back! Bring us back! Uh, he's joking. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just going to get mum in. Bib dog uh, on the beach. Wait for them to come back. Hey! Where? <laughs> Oh, so beautiful, nice, beautiful water. Mm -mm, baby. I could eat it. <laughs> and it is refreshing. Yeah, it is. 